Well, uh, there it is. Soon here's the other side of the story from the kingpin uh, of the hashy scam that fell apart. Yeah, according to him, uh, Harry comes around and demands uh, his courier money for the run that didn't happen. And uh, <laughs> kingpin laughs him off, Harry. Uh, says, look, I'm going to knock you off to the American embassy with all the exact details, unless you give me the money. <laughs> well, that kingpin puts a gun, puts his revolver to Harry's head. You should have seen the energy drama drain out of his face, yeah, body trembling, even after I, I put the gun down. Mm -hmm. says the scammer so pleased with himself this story illustrates uh, it, it, it's typical about the greed for money uh, began, to, began to infiltrate the uh, pure early hippie scene mm -hmm. the uh, I'm becoming enlightened in India quest uh, degenerated into the Western materialistic mantra, hey, private fortunes are, are to be made by smuggling hashish out of India and Nepal. Entrepreneurs, often prison-wise tough characters, uh, uh, recruited uh, vulnerable Asian hippie chicks to work for them as their hashish couriers. Yeah. They bedazzled these down-and-out hippie chicks with uh, expensive dress outfits, uh, expense tabs, and comfortable hotels a few days before the flight, and a <laughs> so minor cut of the action. They had their own people on the other end pick up the suitcase as soon as she cleared customs. Yeah. Well, you know, in fairness, uh, you know, some of these smuggling runs were, were by peaceful hippies and the profits they used to build ashrams in the West and so on. Uh, Ram Dass has a story about that. Mm, I hope he's in the blissful realm now. Just passed away. Uh, yeah. Well, one of these stories was my girlfriend. Hmm. Australian Maria. We were passionate lovers in India. She was a staunch woman, yeah. Drove a motorcycle. Well, my girlfriend ended up with a bullet hole in her head, her rotting corpse floating in Sydney Harbor. Got all carried away with the hashish runs. Started putting the heroin in with it, yeah. Dark side. Innocent 60s, huh? <laughs> Coming to an end. I mean, I remember the innocent hippie trip in the Haight-Ashbury, San Francisco, summer of love, wear a flower in your hair. Get to the West, and we'll do the rest. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, the hate too became trashed by rip-off artists, narcs, pushers pushing fake drugs and junkies preying on innocent uh, young people coming in from all over the country, preying on them like vampires, you know. And uh, after about 1974, uh, the Goa hippie trip gradually slid into similar madness. Why? Massive influx of cocaine. From the South America freaks coming in. I mean, we're a global tribe. We got, you know, runaways from the Russian embassy down here. We got Cuban guys, you know, fed up with Castro. Can't smoke a joint on the boulevard of Havana. You call that a revolution? Well, this period uh, is documented well by uh, Cleo in Goa freaks. Uh, you can probably still get the book used. Uh, even though she died in go from AIDS. And, uh, well, Eddie recounts this uh, violent period uh, that swirled around him when he camped in the uh, 
the famous porch, the ruins of the porch. Uh, here comes a prison-wise, tough New York guy, and he says, Eddie, hey, aren't you afraid I'm going to uh, pop you off? It's so dark here. You're so inconspicuous in the ruins, Eddie. <sighs> Man, why would anybody waste a bullet on me? Well, me, maybe. Uh, I hear you telling people that I'm a gangster. Eddie, well, that's what you are, aren't you? <laughs> Your ill-conceived revolver. Mm, heavy vibes, yeah. Eddie grimaces when he recalls the Birmingham gang phrase. I mean, he actually had a motorcycle gang from Birmingham come over and try to take over the hippie beaches of Goa. I mean, Tony Banana remembers it exactly. He told me a big story about that one day, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the post-1973 <laughs> takeover by dark forces of Goa. Now, I laughed that year. Didn't come back for 35 years. Why? Uh, Eddie sums it up. He remembers, yeah, during that Birmingham gang uh, times, uh, you had to watch out. Uh, well, uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, thank you. Better get back to the main story. Huh? <laughs> Gun spaced out a little bit. Yeah, Catman do. Uh, er uh, Harry gets a gun put to his head. His chick, Valerie, French Valerie, becomes ill, and Eddie finds her slumped in, in the doorway uh, of a Nepali shop. She's loos losing it all together. And uh, you know, later in the cabin, Harry's complaining, yeah, I'm so sick of Valerie being sick all the time. My chick's like sick all the time. She doesn't dance. She sits at the table, mopes. Well, the plot thickens. It's about time. Uh, Eddie gets caught in a a, a, a squeeze play, uh, a possessive. Uh, uh, this happens. Look, uh, Harry comes to adore Eddie more than his wife, Valerie. And Valerie... Uh, Loves Eddie more than her husband, Harry. Uh, while alone uh, uh, with Eddie on acid, Harry confesses. Eddie. 